Hey everybody, my name is Graham. This is Stable Horse Training, and this little one here is Baby Annie. Baby Annie is a BC Wildy. BC Wildies come from our ranges, they're feral horses, and uh, essentially are kind of born out on the range, and then they get uh, sort of rounded up a little bit, and then people come along and adopt them. We're one of those people trying to rescue a few, and hopefully educate, educate people, educate the horses, and hopefully get them on to a better family in time. Now, the thing about little Annie here, she's been here about a month and uh, she's done really well. She's got the, the hang of hay bags. She's learning about domestic life. I think she's made a friend with Maya there, but she's definitely made a friend with us and has become very easy to touch. She gets a little nervous here and there, but if we find a good scratchy spot, well, she just, she just loves it. Look at that. You get a good spot there and, and uh, and she's a big fan of that. She she usually draws. If you have never seen her before, usually she brings her butt over for a good scratch. She's had herself a bit of a brush in today, but more importantly, she has reached her last task to get her out of quarantine. Now, to give a little bit of history of uh, why she's in quarantine, whenever we get our feral horses in, they have to be deloused, deticked, dewormed, and we have to get what's called a Coggins test. A Coggins test is a test for the equine uh, anemia. It's a virus and it's uh, catchable. And uh, uh, it can transfer to other horses as well, if you're not careful. So that has to be done right away. We did that, came back negative, which is good. So Coggins test coming back false or negative is what you want. You don't want an equine infectious anemia virus or disease catching otherwise you have to put them down now it's very unusual coggins tests i don't know if i've ever heard of a true one coming back i'm sure if i asked my vet he'd be like yeah lots but it's very unusual so that was good the next thing was delousing and deticking she did have a pile of ticks on her and uh and probably lice i didn't see any lice but i expect that they were lice and uh, definitely worms. The last time we did deworming, there were a pile of little tiny worms that came out of her. Must have just recently hatched, so those got out. But she's had her second delousing two days ago, and she has had her second deworming today. Now, I've had a lot of questions about this delousing and deticking and, and deworming thing. Why do you have to do it twice? I've never heard that before. And surprisingly, uh, or at least to me, it was surprising that people had not heard of it because it is... Uh, um, very important because the chemicals that are in the medicine don't kill eggs. So if there are any eggs inside of the animal that you just finished delousing or sort of deworming and any eggs on the outside that have the ticks or the lice, um, you're never going to kill them. They're just going to hatch and then you'll be back to square one. You'll have just as many uh, lice, ticks, or worms. So she has gone through with that. Now I've done that. I did a couple shorts. So if you don't watch shorts here on YouTube, then you won't know. But she is done we're going to wait a couple of days so in two days a very ex i consider it a very exciting thing i'm very excited about it i know plenty of you are those that have commented on the shorts that have seen that um we're we're we're, we're getting there we're almost out of quarantine now she has done fantastic here she like i said she's eating a lot of hay hopefully she's putting on a little bit of weight as she loses a lot of this baby fluff um constantly you know, brushing her, but still, it just doesn't matter. Every day just looks a lot like this. And uh, it just comes out and comes out and comes out. Now, another question that I get, actually is a very interesting question, how come she's so fluffy? Is it baby fluff? Um, is it something else? And to be honest, I don't actually know, but I do know that the area that she came from is a little bit more cold, for the best way to put it. Um, the winters would have been colder, a lot more snowy. Uh, so she would have needed a heavier coat compared to here. We're much closer to the coast, so we're in a bit of a rainforest here. If you haven't seen this place, we've got, uh, you know, lush green forest that grows like crazy because it rains a lot. And so because it rains a lot, everything grows and it's warmer. Even though we have mountains just over there, you know, they're they're not very far. Um, it's 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 still warmer because we have the ocean on the other side. So. Being that we're not out in the plains of British Columbia and uh, and uh, have all that wind and all that snow that gathers, we don't get quite as cold. 
sounds like something's going on on the road. So anyway, so Annie's doing great. Uh, I don't think that she has anything left on her or in her after uh, after today. We're going to check tomorrow and see how that turns out. Um, we'll check the poop again. Very important. I uh, did a fecal egg count um, a couple of weeks ago and she had very little, but I think that the results, the real results can vary. Um, you know, sometimes you get a good count and sometimes you don't, you try again. Uh, but I th believe that likely hers had recently hatched. That's why we had all those little tiny worms, tons of them, like hundreds. Uh, it looked like <laughs> I didn't count them. Um, so anyway, so I'll do another fecal egg count and see how that turns out, but I bet it's next to nothing. Um, so she should be clear, which means and the reason she's in quarantine for those three reasons, the Coggins, which was a negative, so that's good. Uh, lice and ticks, we absolutely don't want those spreading around the uh, place here to other horses, otherwise we'll be delousing and deticking them as well. And that's absolutely no fun at all. It costs money, takes time, and is hard on the horses. Um, and then now deworming. Now deworming wasn't quite as important because we don't have the horses out on a pasture or a shared area very much. They all sort of have their their spots to live uh, it, it, for reasons that I put in another video about how it reduces food anxiety, uh, creates a very peaceful environment, and they each they have socialization time anyways. So uh, having worms is not nearly as uh, bad as it could be in a more shared or larger pasture is definitely worse for that kind of thing because that's where the eggs want to be and they're going to just kind of sit there and some of the horse comes along eats uh, eats the grass eggs go in bam so we don't really have a worm problem in this location due to the fact that the horses do not eat other horses worms or eggs so that's a really good thing anyway so the next question that i want to answer is who will Annie be going out with first? Now, Annie's just a little thing. You know, she's just, just the cutest little. She's only a year old. Um, so a lot of people have been, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to maybe get another baby for her to play with or something like that? Um, but I don't actually expect any problems to, for her to go out with any of the uh, older horses. Um, so as usual, the first horse that I'm going to have her try out with is Luke because he's the ambassador. He gets along with every horse that we ever have. And uh, I think that it will be interesting. We'll start with Luke and we'll work our way along. Um, I'd like, I've been thinking about whether or not she should live in the paddock with another horse. I think that might be uh, a good thing for her. Um, so in such a case, maybe Lena, uh, maybe Yoka, but I'm not really sure. Uh, We'd have to try things out. So we'll see how the meet and greets go. Oh, the sun's really coming out. We'll see how the meet and greets go and who she might be able to bunk with. Um, maybe nobody, who knows? Maybe they don't get along at all, but I expect it'll go pretty good. I'm not too worried, um, but that's kind of the deal. So that's going to happen pretty soon. She's uh, she, could, she could definitely use some weight. She could definitely put on a little bit of, a little bit of uh, groceries, as they say. So it's really exciting. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. And uh, and then when we get when we get her meeting up with uh, with each each horse individually, then hopefully I could then um, put her in with more than one horse at a time, especially if it goes really well. I think that we'll pick that up a little bit quicker um, and uh, soon she'll be playing with all all the horses here. So join me for that over the next little bit. Um, depending on when I put this up, it might be one day or two days uh, from this video when she'll be going out. And of course, we'll have video for that as everybody's so excited to watch her play. Um, being that she's so small, another thing to think about is the big arena. Uh, not that I think she'll go under the fence, uh, but I think she would be happy to hop over it if she was in trouble. So. A lot of groundwork has been done. I've been, I've done all of her halter training. She's fantastic to halter. I have to do a little bit more groundwork, but I've been working on leading and uh, having her move a little bit. Uh, so the groundwork stuff is coming along. In case I lose her, in case something goes sideways, I do want to be able to catch her. And the other thing is I want her to be okay with having the lead rope on the ground. I've tried it one time. She got a little worried, uh, but I was still able to cap capture her without too much trouble, without her losing her mind. 
too much. It t- probably took about maybe 10 seconds or so. It feels like longer when you're watching a horse get really worried and run around a little bit. But I'd say max 10 seconds it kind of took for her to like stand there and then I just walk up and I grab that lead. But I want her good with that because if it goes, if I lose her and the lead rope goes on the ground and she steps on it or something like that, I don't want her further losing her mind uh, because of that. Some horses do. So it's good to get your horses good at that kind of thing. So we'll be doing a little bit of that as well before uh, I go out and about. <laughs> But hopefully she'd just stick around anyways, because all of the other horses here are here. And I'll be counting on the fact that she doesn't want to leave all the other horses um, in the worst case scenario. But overall, I think it'll be fine. Something to think about, though. Anyhow, so that's it for now. Little baby Annie is doing just great. Again, like I said, we can approach, we can touch, we can we can, we can make sure, you know, if there's any... Any kind of problems, we should be able to check. We kind of go like that. We can touch over here. Obviously touch her butt as she comes up all the time and, and asks for butt scratches. Not right now. She seems to have a little bit of a little bit of an empty tum-tums for some reason. She's doing nothing but eat, but it's good. We want her to eat. We need groceries on her. So anyhow, that's it for now. Hopefully uh, that's a good little update for everybody that is interested in little tiny bb annie's progress it is going fantastic she's a very smart little horsey and um yeah i'm really happy with the way it's come along so that's it i'll see you guys in the next one and i uh, hope you're having a great day